I am trying to share my screen. Just give me one second. Getting here. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Miss McGaw. I am the tenth or twelfth grade counselor. Um, this is a presentation on senior transition to post secondary education. The first section will be um, about standardized testing. I want to make a note that test scores can be sent to colleges up to the admission deadline that they are taking applications. The first standardized test is the ACT, which is pretty common around here. Um, students should have already taken the ACT at least once. If the students are wanting to improve their score, they need to be have need to take the exam ASAP. And Arkansas Arts Academy is a national testing facility and we do offer certain tests, one that we do not offer at the school. Test scores are attached to the student's transcripts when they are sent to colleges. Some of the upcoming test dates are October 10th, October 17th, October 24th. Those three are, um, I believe the 17th actually is offered at Arkansas. No, it's not. It's not? Okay. I did have it right then. Um, oh, yeah, because we're on break. Um, all, the, all of the October dates are past registration. Even the late registration has passed. The next one that you can sign up for is the December 12th. I did not put this in there, but the December and the April ACT test you can pay an extra $35 and get your test scores and the test questions back. Um, and on the bottom are some study resources. I have ACT study packets, it's a paper test in my, at my office. And you can also go to ACT or academyact.org. In the academy.act.org, you can, if you've taken the ACT already, it'll preset your scores and it will create a study platform based off of what you've already scored. The next step test is the SAT. This is put on by College Board. It is also similar to the PSAP. They both are put on by College Board. And it's off, the PSAP's also often given to students in between ninth and 11th grade. If you want to send these scores to colleges, you have to send them through College Board. They are not sent to the schools, so I do not have access to them. These test dates are October 3rd, which is past deadline, November 7th, and December 5th. And some of these study resources are, they have practice tests on College Board, and Khan Academy is also a great resource. Um, so another test is the NWAC AccuPlacer. This is for students that are attending NWAC or if you're wanting to take classes, the concurrent classes. You can take initial courses such as, and it's for the placement for reading, writing, listening, and math. So if you didn't score very well on your ACT or your SAT in math, you could take the AccuPlacer so that you don't have to take intermediate math. Um, it is self-paced and it is, it's a computerized exam. There's no time limit. Um, it is only offered at the Bentonville campus and it's a $10 fee. And then there's some links to sign up. If you are wanting to go to a trade school or um, to another school that does offer um, AccuPlacers, you can take a um, 
virtual AccuPlace or remote at NWAC. It's just, it's an th extra $35 fee. And some of the additional tests that they do offer are automated service excellence, the college level ex examination program, um, and paralegal association and others. Um, the next section is how do you choose a college? What is right for me? Finding the right fit. Picking a college is like choosing a second family. What is right for one senior may not be right for another. You have to ask yourself, does this environment feel like it's a place that I will be happy and grow? Some of the priorities that you need to look at and you should resource and uh, look, at, look at when you look at their website. And even if you do a virtual tour or go face-to-face -to -face tour, Look at the department that you're majoring in. Is Do you prefer a big or little school? Do you like in a big city or uh, in a rural area? Do you like religious schools? All of these factors are huge factors to decide when you're looking at colleges and they should be taken very seriously into consideration. This is The next section is the college admiss admissions process. What should I do during my senior year? This fall, you should be narrowing your college schools list to about five or six schools. You should have about two dream schools, which are academic credentials fall a little bit lower. Your academic credentials fall a little bit lower end or below the school's average. You should also have two target schools. And this is your academic credentials your grades, your ACT, SAT scores, and the class rank fall well within the average. And then there's two safety schools where your academic credentials exceed the school's range of ac the average for first year student. And you also wanna have a financially safe school as well. I would highly suggest listing these schools on Naviance. Every senior has an account unless they are new to the school. If they are new, I can create them one. Their user ID is their AAA email, and if you need to have your password reset, just let me know and I can reset it for you. Um, you also need to start requesting your letters of recommendation. You can request one from myself, which I would, I would like to have a form filled out since I am new to the facility. Um, you can also get, have teachers fill one out, and you need to give them a notice as well and you need to take your standardized testing. You do not need to procrastinate on it with your applications. The earlier you apply, the better. You should complete up all applications by December 1st. Once you have completed the applications, request that your transcript be sent to the colleges using the transcript request form. This is on the artsk12.org website in the form section. And also, after you have done this, be sure to send thank you notes to everyone that has helped you. The teachers that have wrote your recommendation letters, people who have helped you write your resumes, make sure you do send those thank you notes. This winter, today is October 1st, so today is actually the first day to apply for the FAFSA. Um, this, the FAFSA is for, for financial aid and scholarships. Um, we will be having another parent night for the, the FAFSA to explain what all is needed and help you walk through it. February 14th is the final of the FAFSA. And in mid-February, the grades will be sent out. So you need to be making sure you keep up with your grades, that you're keeping on top of them and they are well, between, well passing. And these are some links to the FAFSA. Be sure not to catch senioritis. And I thought this um, comic was really funny due to COVID and everything like that. Um, the senioritis is a noun. It's slacking of the spring or after being accepted into college. Every year colleges rescind offers of admissions or alter financial aid packages as a result of senioritis because this does affect your grades. If you're tired and you don't work as well, 
your grades will obviously go downhill and they college colleges will see this um colleges do not receive final grades until july students often don't learn a revoked admission until august which is right when school starts so don't be a victim be sure you're on top of everything and you get all your assignments done so there's different types of applications and different thing ways that you can apply early decision versus early action early decision is you apply early to the first choice college which is usually around the November, you receive an admissions decision from the college well in advance of the usual notice date. And that it, the usual notice date is December. This is a binding contract once you accept the college offer. You agree to attend the college if accepted and offer a financial aid package that is considered adequate by the family. You may not only apply to one college for early decision. Oh, you may only apply. But if you do apply to one college for early decision, you can apply to other colleges, but under regular admissions. Um, you must with, oops. You must, oh, I you must withdraw all other applications once you have accepted this early decision and it's a non-refund non-refundable deposit early action is when you apply early um, you receive an admissions decision early in the app at in the admissions cycle which is usually around january february this is a non-binding decision you do not have to commit to the early action college. You may apply to other colleges under regular missions as well. Must You must give the, a college a decision no later than May 1st, which is more a national response. So a lot of colleges, that is the deadline. And how do you remember the between deci early decision and early action? Remember the D and B. The D in decision is a binding contract. There's also rolling admissions and regular admissions. Rolling admissions is non-binding. Colleges review your application and notify you of their decision within a few weeks of your decision, and you have to decide before May 1st. In a regular admissions, is the traditional process, and you apply by the regular deadline, it's non-binding, and you have to also notify them by May 1st. So when should you apply to colleges? If applying to a full four-year college, it is strongly suggested that you apply now, this fall. If you're applying to a two-year college or a technical school, you can apply for fall admissions during the spring of your, your senior year. So in the spring, you can start applying. So where do you find find the applications. One of the biggest places is the Common App. There are over 400 national universities on this website and it in the blue box is the website for it. And a lot of colleges do also have individual college applications. You can go to their websites and on the admissions tab. Uh, many institutions have their own unique application available on their website. So what do colleges need for admissions? They need a completed application, official high school transcript, make sure to use, there are no mistakes on your transcript. You did not take the required class. Did you take the required classes to graduate? Did you lose, lose credits? Is your lost credits corrected? Is your GPA and class rank corrected? So make sure you check it and make sure everything is correct. Uh, they also wanna see your SAT and ACT scores. You will have an application fee and there will be essays. Optional things that you can submit is a resume and portfolios. Portfolios are usually required for art schools. You will sometimes need a secondary school report a mid-year report, a counselor's letter of recommendation, and a teacher's letter of recommendation. 
The secondary school reports will be sent to the counselor. Um, make sure you keep copies of everything. You should have a folder um, that you have everything in and keep it with you because there's something may get lost, especially with everything being digital. So what does AAA send to colleges? We send the transcript. We send your senior schedule. If you make changes to your schedule after you have applied, you must notify to the college. If the college sees that you have lightened your student senior load without notifying them, they have a right re to rescind your acceptance. Admissions officers regularly see this type of, is a type of lying and will assume the worst. Ask permission if you are unsure whether or not the college will care if you dropped a course. So keep communicating with them is the best advice I could give. Um, we also send the secondary school report, a school profile. Um, it's optional, a counselor's letter of request of recommendation if required. And at the end of the first semester to send a mid-year report um, of your grades and class rank. So what is this SSR? It is a secondary school report. It is, instead of using each university's various variations of SS, F, SSR, some are highly chosen schools to send their own. The Common App has one, one profile that if we send it to Common App, it will send it, just have it in their file. At the top of the SSR application, are given the choice to waive or not waive your rights to access the college admissions file. So you will, there will be a section that you need to fill out. Due to FERPA, the student owns the confidential information and may request to see his or her application file unless they waive their right. If the student waives his or her right to access, the student no longer has the right to see what is written by, sorry, I can't hide it by anyone in the admissions. So what really matters to colleges? Really, there's no magic formula, there's no rules. Small schools pay greater attention to the person. Larger schools often use mathematical formulas based on GPA, ACT, SAT, and the favor in-state applicants. They also look at courses taken. Um, colleges wanna see academic discipline and challenge. The grades that you've received, your class rank, your score, SAT scores, ACC scores, your essays, recommendations, extracurricular activities, and your interviews. And the extracurricular activities can be sports, it can be volunteering, anything along those things that are outside of school or even clubs within school. So some of the most significant factors in admissions, your grade or grades earned in academic courses are a, the, one of the biggest factors for admissions. Transcripts is the biggest driver of the whole process. Admission counselors report that colleges recalculate GPA only using academic courses. Some of the other trends in college admissions Admission counselors often reveal that rigor comes up often looking at caliber of courses. Through the SSR and the high school profiles, colleges can dis discern how many AP and honor level courses were offered. So did the student take advantage of the available courses? So way, some of the ways that you can influence the admissions department so in the schools that you're really interested in is have college visits. A lot of colleges do offer virtual tours. Um, have a college interview, talk to the people in admissions, uh, attend weekend seminars and workshops. As a rule of thumb, the earlier you apply, the better. Keep informed on Naviance. Meet with your college reps when they come to AAA and ask questions. If you need help, come to your counselor. 
Um, we are in the, I am in the process of scheduling some more colleges to visit us at the school and virtual. So if you have a special request of one, please let me know and I will see if, get in touch with them and see if they can come. Um, college visits. If you want to visit a college, make an appointment online or call the admissions office for an appointment at least two weeks beforehand. Like I said, most colleges do offer virtual tours due to COVID. Prepare for your visit. Make a plan of plan and gather background information on that college because it will benefit you when you ask questions. Some of the places that you should visit when you do go, you, admissions office, financial aid office, media center, the programs that you're interested in, housing, the dining hall, and while you're there, talk to some students and faculty, what, and also write the thank you notes. Some, offer, some colleges will have college interviews, which are only highly selective or private colleges usually re conduct the interviews. Public universities do not, it's not very common. If an interview is possible, it is beneficial. It's your time to shine and it's your time to show them who you really are. Call the university admissions office to schedule an interview at least two weeks ahead of the state you plan to visit. If an interview is part of their admissions, admissions process, most out-of-state universities have alumni that can help you with the interview. There are hints about interviews in your student senior planner. Um, meet with the college reps when they visit. Take advantage of this opportunity. These visits will be scheduled in an advisory period. If you the, the sessions will be on RTI for you to sign up for. Um, these reps are often the first readers of the admissions file. So make an impression. Letters of recommendation. Not all colleges require or will recommend or read the recommendation letters. Generally, public universities do not require one. Often private universities do and read the application thoroughly. Follow the directions implicitly. If they ask for two letters, don't send more than two letters. Make a positive impression by having students ask for the letters from teachers whom they have a good rapport and in whose classes they have worked very diligently in. A lot of times the, the letters of recommendation will be for more scholarships and things like that which we'll cover here in a few minutes. Um, there's usually, if they do require a letter, for, letter of recommendation, the standard is two letters of academic sources. You can have teachers who describe the student as a learner in the classroom, highly selective schools, and some scholarships require two teacher recommendations. One should come from a junior or senior core academic teacher a teacher with whom they have developed rapport with. The second should come from someone who presents a different dimension. So a sponsor, a sports, band, church, employer, or one of your arts teachers. The counselor is one that you can also write a letter of recommendation. They describe the student's hospital, I can't ever say this word. Holistically. <laughs> Holistically as a person, sorry, thank you. Um, you can also have leaders of outside programs you're involved in, such as Boy Scouts, gr dance, Girl Scouts, church groups, etc. Um, if you are requesting a letter of recommendation from your teacher, this is fill out a brag, sh brag sheet located in the senior planner. You must give the teacher at least a three week notice. You are not the only student asking for a letter. So that's why the three week notice is important. List this every school you want the teacher to send the recommendation letter to. So they, teachers do not give you the recommendation letter to send, they send it to the school. Give the teacher the correct email address, website to submit to or near, neatly address and stamp an envelope to every college. Teachers will mail the recommendation to the college. Remember that teachers write these letters to help you, be sure to tell them how grateful you are. 
This is another place that you can send a thank you note. Um, if you want your counselor to send a recommendation letter, you also must give a three week notice. You can fill out the brag sheet in your planner or I have a letter of recommendation form that I can send you um, since I am new. Um, give This gives detailed, specific examples whenever possible. The better job you do, the more let your recommendation letter reflects your uniqueness. A resume is also helpful to send to the counselor. Email your forms. Check to make sure your counselor received the forms and make sure they do not want additional information. You also, there will be essays. Be sure to use your, be sure to voice, your voice comes through clearly. Tell a story that reveals something unique about you. This is your time to shine. This is your time to brag upon yourself. It is often hard to talk about yourself in those kind of ways, but this is, this is what will help you, and this is how they will see who you are. Um, after you're done, ask yourself, if there was a stack of papers of essays, could your parents look through them and pick out who you, it is? Do you come across as an in, inter, interesting person the admission officers would like to know better? So here are some common app essay prompts. Um, this is, they've had these for a few years and they did announce that they are the same this year as they were last year. So these are them and there are quite a few. Some of them are, some students have a background, identity, interest or talent so meaningful they believe there's, their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, please share your story. Another one is a reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? Discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. These are 14 steps for the application process. The first one is narrow college choices to five to eight schools. Put your choices on Naviance. Visit the school counselor and visit schools to which you're applying. Be sure to tell your school counselor if you are using the Common App for any colleges. Check deadlines for the applications. Complete teacher letter recommendation forms and ask for two teachers for the letters. Go to the college websites, click on the admissions, undergraduate admissions, and complete the application online. Request official scores from College Board or ACT. When you have finished the applications, request your transcript to be sent and the letters of recommendation. I don't know where the other ones went. There they are. <laughs> There's one in the way. Um, Go to fafa.edu.gov and create your PIN number. That is something that you can do now. You will be required to have that whenever you start the process. Um, go back after October 1st and complete your FAFSA. Wait for the notification from colleges. If colleges send emails or letters saying items are missing, call the admissions office to double check. Receive admissions or denial letters from colleges. Send an intent of register notification to colleges by May 1st, along with the housing depo deposit. If you're planning on attending a two-year college or a, trades, a tech school, um, you will. these are things that you can do starting the spring. You can visit the college or tech school website and go to the admissions download the paper application or complete it online if they offer it. Um, submit the paper application along with the application fee to your school counselor. Your counselor will mail your application fee and transcript to the college or technical school. Take the AccuPlace or NWAC if need be, and you will need ACT or SAT scores. I'm not sure what this one is. 
missed. Oh, this is for your college resume. Um, this is one of the, something that isn't required, but it will be helpful for you. It makes you shine. Um, send a resume can be adventurous. It can be an additional addition to the activity section of the application. One way to make your application file more polished, feel more polished. Um, a two minute scan of your resume highlights what you want your read, the admissions reader to read within that small time frame. Your resume should be professional, concise, specific, and factual. Your, I, your counselor has resume examples if you need to see them. There's also some on Google. If you need help on where to start with your resume, I do have resume builder forms that the students can fill out. It, just ask me to, and I can give them to you. Um, the cost of a college education, the initial sticker price of an education may not be the actual cost of attendance. If overqualified in some manner or have demonstrated financial need, the university often offers, offers scholarship incentives to attend. Or some examples are athletics, rank, national merit, etc. Private schools are more expensive than public colleges. Their scholarships are often more generous, though. Often the fine final cost of attendance isn't known until April of your senior year. Unless the student has made a binding early action contract with the college, the student has until May 1st to officially choose their college and pay the initial enrollment deposit. So this next section is scholarships. What do you need to be doing? Some of the need to knows. Every college offers their own scholarships. A lot of people don't know this, and some of the, but some of the scholarships are once you are in that specific department that you are studying in. So, for example, the engineering department at the University of Arkansas has their own scholarships for their students. They have over a billion dollars of scholarships to give to their students. Um, they have their own. These colleges have their own perimeters. Make sure you are filling out the appropriate paperwork to meet these deadlines for these scholarships. I also created a Google Sheet scholarships in, and I shared it in the class of 2021 Google Classroom. So check it out and I will be constantly adding scholarships to it. So don't just look at it once, check it all the time. Also, if you have to pay for scholarship information, do not do it. It is a scam. Where to look for scholarships? Um, there are college scholarship search engines, and I have a slide for that. Um, contact businesses, industry groups that provide services or projects that products that you are majoring in. Um, determine if they sponsor students who are entering that their profession or industry. Check churches, synagogues, or other, other religious affiliations. Check your place of employment or even your parents' place of employment. They often have scholarships for children or you as a, their employer. Local community leaders or the Chamber of Commerce Determine if the community is sponsoring students in specific professions, such as medical students, engineering, teachers, etc. Also check with national organizations. They may offer scholarships to individuals with specific cultural background, personal circumstances, interests, and skills. Some helpful tips. Apply only if you are eligible Read all of the requirements and directions carefully to determine eligibility. Some scholarships only offer to, if you went to this high school or if you're from this state, if you're going to this college, so make sure that you are looking at those requirements. Some are also, um, if I've also, I found one that is, if you're a male 
over six foot one or female over five foot 10, you're eligible for a thousand dollar scholarship. So there are stipulations, but there are millions of scholarships out there. Make sure you complete the full application and follow the directions, provide all information required. Essays are required for applications. Ask your English teacher or the school counselor to assist you with your final draft. It's really important to have this proof read. It is okay to use an essay more than for more than one application as long as the, it matches the criteria. Give yourself enough time to meet these deadlines. Make sure you submit your application essay and any references at least one week prior to that deadline. You don't want to wait till the last minute because if you're missing something, it could cause that cause you not to get it. Some more helpful tips. Save copies of your applications and essays in case something comes up missing. Review the entire application and materials prior to sm submitting and make sure you sm spell check. Remember, your scholarship application represents who you are. You must submit an application in a neatly manner, neat, timely manner, and keep it professional looking. Think about events and various factors in your life. Some of these can be that where you can look for scholarships. Um, some of these can be if your parents are in the military. This doesn't be, have to be active. There are some that are um, that are not. Um, can, there are cancer scholarships if you or somebody in your immediate family has had cancer. There's also dis ones for disabilities. Um, if you need help look on what to look for, check with me and I can help you with that. These are some um, scholarship, scholarship search engines. FastWeb is a really good one. Scholarships.com is, um, you don't log in, into it, you can just, it's a basic search one. You can search by categories. Um, so that's where I kind of found there's a category for the most unique scholarships. And that's where I actually found the one on the height. Um, goingmary.com, this is one where you can create an account and I can help you with that. Um, studentscholarships.org, there's also naviance.com. And like I mentioned before, all students do have an account to this, and if you need help with it, let me know. Is there, that's it. Is there any questions? No, that's a lot. If there are no questions, thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to be posting the recording later so you can watch it again, as well as the presentation itself. So you can use it at your own um, speed in a uh, browser. Um, students, if you have questions, parents, if your students have questions, send them to Miss McGough. She's very, very good at finding money for scholars. That's what part of her job was at her previous school as well. Um, so we're happy to help you with the scholarship process and finishing those applications. If you want a recommendation from me, remember that you have to give me a deadline <laughs> so that I can put it on my calendar and get reminders. Um, otherwise, it will get lost in my inbox. So uh, thank you for coming. I see somebody with a question. Yes, do you have a question? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Um, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Sam Sabaha's stepfather. But, uh, I, that was a great presentation. Thank you. Um, uh, if we want to set up a meeting with you, uh, what do we do? We just email you, um, Ms. McGaugh? Yes. Yeah, we can set up a meeting. Um, it would be virtual until we return after right. the But I am happy to meet with you at any time. Um, it can be face to face after. The break in October, right? But it can be. But we could set up a virtual meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. And and every kid has an Aviance account, and they yes. they know their access to it. Um, they 
if they have accessed it, they should have a password. It is their AAA email is their user ID. Um, if they do not remember it, they can email me and I will reset it and send them the temporary password. Okay, so if they don't remember the password, just have them email you. Is it? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Great. That that Robbie, was really. That Robbie was great. Has a lot of different features to it. They can keep their um, organization for their college process. It's like kind of a one-stop shop. They can keep everything there. They can look for scholarships there. Um, so it's a good resource for them. To use yeah i'm familiar if with not, it. i just um haven't seen um i've been on uh his sister's account with with, with her but i haven't uh it, uh we haven't been on his account so i didn't i didn't know so i was just i don't i'm not sure if he remembers his password he might i just i don't know but, <laughs> uh, i really appreciate it. that was a great i uh, I'm, yeah. I'm actually in the test prep industry so oh cool was, that was, you did great. That was great. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you. For anyone else who's not familiar with Naviance, students can also take like career surveys if they're not sure what they want to do. That'll kind of point them into something that they might have an interest in um, and also attach that to colleges where or schools where they can do that thing. Um, so Naviance is a really good tool for students to use to kind of figure out what they want to do and keep track of all of the processes of moving on beyond high school. Okay, thank you again for coming. Uh, we'll post the video. And if you have any questions about college scholarships or application process, Ms. McGaw's email is kmcgaugh, K-M-C-G-A-U-G-H at artsk12.org. Uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Have a wonderful evening.